Hey, good evening, Spig Northern Bear here. I just wanted to give an update because I just met with my cardiologist today. It's the first time he's seen me in person in two years. So I was pretty excited to see him and he was pretty excited to see my weight loss and that. Because during the pandemic, all my appointments with him have essentially been by phone. And he's just been relying on a diagnostic test and that I go for in uh, lieu of physical examinations. So I guess a couple of things I want to follow up on is uh, the big news is thanks to my weight loss, he says I am now a, 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 the ideal candidate for ablation. He said, you're young, you have a, you, you're not, you're no longer clinically obese. You've taken care of your blood pressure. So I'm an ideal candidate for relations. So I've been referred to the electrophysiologist where I'll consult and I'll decide if I want to have an ablation because I'm, to be honest, I'm really not convinced I need one. My AFib seems fairly well controlled. I'm on such a small amount of medication that I have no side effects at all. So I'm not, I mean, ablation is not without risk. So I, I'll talk to the electrophysiologist. I'm open to it. I'm just not sure I'm going to go through with it. And if I do, then uh, I'll talk about it at the time. Chances are they'll talk me into it. Thank thankfully, the, uh, the people nearby here in Hamilton are considered the best in Canada. And I've consulted them with them once before, actually during wave one of the pandemic. And that was a crazy time. I managed to see the two leading electrophysiologists in Canada because they just happened to be in the building at the time and it worked out really well for me. So I uh, saved probably a six month waiting list or something just to talk to these guys. So I'm kind of excited to see that level of progress. Um, now, not long ago, I posted a video about my ectopic beats and how I pretty much fixed them. So I'm pleased to report that while they're not 100% gone, they're still about 95% gone at least the ones I can notice. And when I do get them, they're far less intense. So they don't freak me out anymore and they don't keep me awake when I try to sleep. If I'm having a few at night, they don't keep me awake. So they're very minor now. They're they're kind of just a little bit annoying um, at, at their worst where they were actually painful. So just to give you from some perspective, in March, my Holter showed 10% ectopic heartbeats. 10% of my heartbeats were ectopic. Um, all my holters before that all showed between 8 and 10%. So this is pretty standard for me. I've got a year and a half, almost two year history of 8 to 10% ectopic beats. As much as uh, one holter is 13,000 ectopic beats in one day. So it's a problem for me. Um, so not long ago I went back on Fleck and I had my my, and they did a one week holter and that showed my ectopic beats about four to five percent. So that fleck and I brought it down that much. However, the ectopic beats I were having were intense and painful. Especially that pounding, you know, from a skip beat, you get that punch in your chest. It was actually painful, which is what set me off on round of research. And uh, so I started my supplementation regime and after I added the arginine, after after a while, when I added in the arginine, the, the effect was almost immediate. It was literally the next day. So the video is still up, and I intend to leave it up. And now I have a Holter monitor showing that about 1% of my heartbeats are ectopic. And um, less than 1%, he said, your ectopic beats are no different than like just a healthy person in the population we'd expect around the same level of ectopic beats now the difference is i still feel them sometimes and i don't imagine that the average joe in the population has a you know 100 ectopic heartbeats in a day he probably doesn't even notice but i noticed them so i'm just being honest they're not completely gone but they're so much better like just so much better so i think if you haven't watched that video on how i fix my ectopic beats I guess so. I'll try to put the link like wherever it goes, somewhere up here, and you can click it and check it out if you have ectopic beats. I suggest giving that video a good watch because it's really been game changing for me. As I, aside from that, I've been getting over a cold and it's gotten down in my chest a little bit, so I've been laying off the exercise. You know, the rule above if, if, if it's above the neck, you can work out. If it's below the neck, don't bother. So I've been taking that seriously because why risk it? You know, 
not going to lose all my gains in a week. So um, I'm looking forward to getting out. I run real bad though. I really just need like a lo another long 10k run just to feel right. So I'm hoping in the next couple of days that can happen, but uh, today's not the day. Um, so that's been good. I mean, I'm getting over it. It's not clinging or anything. I mean, I seem to be able to mount uh, an immune system defense to whatever bugs going around. It's not COVID. I took the test. Um, just been really busy, really hard to find time to edit videos right now. I'm trying to uh, just get better at it. I'm trying to do a better job each time I do one. So I end up taking probably twice as long as I need to. Right now I'm working on just trying to improve the sound quality of my videos. So you'll notice that that my last video, if you watched it, um, I've been trimming out some of my verbal tics. I've, I've, you know, when you start doing YouTube and you start actually watching yourself talk, you realize you have these conversational tics you become aware of your speech habits you were never aware of before. And so uh, sometimes I watch my videos and I'm like, do I really talk like that? And I look at my wife, do I, do I actually sound like that sometimes? Yeah, you do, okay, great. So uh, sort of some self-awareness uh, has developed here on some of my weird speech habits. Um, so, I mean, what can I say? I am spent too many years in Northern Ontario and you know, some time on the reserve and, uh, you know, you pick up some weird, weird vocal uh, habits. We almost have our own accent up north. So uh, I still have some of that. And uh, so watching myself on YouTube when I video editing has been a, a kind of an eye opening thing. And and I think the last thing that I, I've really got out of being on YouTube that just carries me on is all the positive comments I get from everyone where I can just feel that when I share what I'm going through and what I've felt and what I've experienced and what I've learned from it, people just come in and they've, they've drawn those same lessons or they said, oh, I, that, that's happened to me or I never thought of looking at it the way you're looking at it and they leave comments on Facebook, they leave comments on YouTube. I just have, I, I feel like I'm this mountain lake and there's all these rivers feeding from from different destinations into this lake feeding positive energy because i have positive comments on youtube on email and now i've got i actually got one over meta today my first uh, my first communication over meta so i've been i've been really enjoying this process and and i'm really hoping i can get some more time to do some more so, but I appreciate that there's an audience for the videos I do put out. And again, I, I do have another channel called Big Northern Bear Lifts and Runs where I just do like really quick videos off my phone and I just more talk about working out. But if you just want to see some more of what I'm up to, you could subscribe to that. So anyway, it's been, uh, it's been some fun so far. I'm here for the long term, I think I'm, I'm going to keep making these YouTube videos and keep talking about what I've learned about AFib and living with AFib and dealing with high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, all these things that I've resolved. And uh, hopefully, you know, I guess I guess the big thing that I saw this week was someone telling me I watched your video on that treadmill was a kick in the ass I needed to get to get back in the saddle. And, and that's not the first time I've had a comment like that, but man, that's the one, those are the ones that, like, I just think if I hadn't have put something out into the world, what would have kicked this person's butt? What would have motivated them? Maybe, maybe this was it. Maybe this was the one thing. So I don't know, but I, I think for me, this is kind of a karma project. And so when I put that out into the world and I get feedback like that back, that's just that means a lot to me and uh, my wife she reads those comments and she just loves it when people talk like that it makes us both very happy and uh, makes makes me feel like it's worth it I mean it's a small audience I mean I'm never going to have a million subscribers and I don't much care but the people who watch my channel they have they have a, some serious health issues and and maybe we're a niche group of people but 
um, you know, there can be a place for us, right? We can just keep this growing. So again, thanks for watching and sorry to be a bit rambly and a bit unedited and a bit raw, but that's what I have time for tonight. And I just wanted to just lay this video out and give everyone an update, talk about my AFib uh, ablation referral and my ectopic beats going down and share the good news that, you know, what I'm doing is working for me and I feel it's evidence-based. So I put the links in the videos where, where they're needed and, and maybe it's something you can talk with your cardiologist and, and try some of the things I've done. And, uh, and I, I wish you all the best and keep sending in the feedback and keep, keep sharing your stories. And if you tried anything I've suggested and, and you've had good results or bad, come back and share them with me. Much appreciated. Okay, Big Northern Bear signing out. Have a great night.